Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to start tonight by appreciating us for the sacrifice of fasting. There is no gift of fasting. Hallelujah. There's no such thing in the Bible as the gift of fasting. Fasting has always been a sacrifice. So it's not, there's, there's no such... It's not, it's, not, it's not anything unusual when you are tired. There is no gift of fasting. Fasting is not abstinence from food. Fasting is abstinence from food to seek the Lord. If you are not seeking the Lord, you are not fasting. Hallelujah. Most times, people just stay away from food and go around gisting, sleeping, gossiping, allowing the devil to use them. That's not fasting. Fasting is abstaining from food to seek. The seeking part is the difference between fasting and just maybe some sort of diet control or whatever it is. Are we together now? The idea is not to starve yourself. You see, you have to understand this. The idea is not starvation. It was on account of food a man gave away his destiny. He says, I prefer to eat than to have my destiny. What is it in my destiny? Let me exchange that destiny for food. Called Esau in the Bible. He was not clothes. He said, I am so hungry to hell with my destiny. Bring me that pottage of red stew. And his destiny went away. Many people laugh at Esau, but that's what we do all our lives. We allow food to take away the place of an encounter that can change your life forever. There is no one on earth I know, no one who truly works in authentic power with God who does not fast. Not just as a ritual. What food is to your sustenance is what fasting is to your spiritual growth. Nobody outgrows food. Nobody. You can't say I've been eating for 40 years. Are we together now? So I need us to be at the same pace so that we don't think it's just a starvation. Remember in the book of Acts 23, don't turn there, there were certain people who went to consult diviners on what to do with Paul and the Bible says they bound themselves with a curse and they said we will neither eat nor drink until Paul dies. Fasting so that an anointed man of God can die. Are we together now? So we need to understand that this that God is doing is to empower us so that we can rise in life. It's a sacrifice that God has designed for our lifting. Even Jesus himself fasted and Jesus was teaching and said, when you fast, not if you fast. And when God declares a corporate fast, there are individual fasts, but there is a corporate fast. That is a commanded fast. Is this not the kind of fast I have commanded? You can do the one you want to do, but when God commands it, it's because there is something that he has in mind. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated for a while. Just pray one prayer. Lord Jesus, open my eyes. Open my eyes to the understanding of your word. Open my eyes. Please pray. Make sure you are praying. Open my eyes open my eyes oh oh
chapter 19 tonight i'm sharing on the power of knowledge the power of knowledge luke chapter 19 in the new testament jesus cried twice the first reason why he cried listen carefully the first reason why jesus cried was when he was weeping at lazarus's grave and the bible records that oh how he loved him so love was one of the first reasons why jesus cried the second reason why he cried is found in luke chapter 19 from verse 41 luke chapter 19 luke chapter 19 blessed be the name of the lord luke chapter 19 verse 41 and when he was come near he beheld the city listen carefully and wept over it saying if thou hast known even thou at least in this thy day the things which belong unto thy peace he says but they are hidden from thy eyes jesus stood over a city and was weeping he was watching the way the people were guessing their lives and jesus your jesus started crying and his reason for crying is that if you had known the things that are responsible for your peace responsible for your peace not just the quietness responsible for your results jesus stood and was crying and his, his purpose of crying was the ignorance of the people in that city and the inevitable fact that they would continue to be victims of that ignorance he says you do not know the things that belong for your peace he says but now they are hidden from your eyes meaning that although you are looking you cannot see them this kingdom we have been drumming it from day one of this fast that this kingdom is a kingdom of information is a kingdom of light dominion in this kingdom is a product of knowledge not desire knowledge not intention knowledge hallelujah dominion in this kingdom is not just based on knowledge but based on sufficient knowledge having knowledge is not enough when a student goes to write exams the student is not writing another subject if he gets seven over hundred is that true he failed 93 percent and passed seven percent but the seven percent is not enough to pass the student so having knowledge is not enough there is a level of knowledge it takes for dominion to be true if the light goes off right now and you light a matchbox it is light but it is not sufficient enough to turn the night in this auditorium today so saying you have knowledge is not enough the knowledge must be sufficient to a degree that can bring you the result you desire the problem for many of us is not necessarily ignorance it is insufficient knowledge is God speaking to us mm. we need deep enough knowledge not just knowledge deep enough knowledge about finances deep enough knowledge about divine health deep enough knowledge about the anointing deep enough knowledge about church growth deep enough knowledge about increase having knowledge is not enough it is true that we know some things but the challenge is those things may not hold all the keys that are required to command the results that we desire let me show you a verse that i found very very interesting first corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2 this blessed me in no small way. 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2. It says, And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to. That means the proof that you are knowledgeable is that there is a desire in you for more. 
that the moment there is a point in your life where you believe that you know enough the apostle is speaking that by the spirit that a sense of arrival and complacency is a symptom of insufficient knowledge see not saying that the more i know you the more i want to know you so when you encounter god when you encounter the spirit of knowledge and revelation the sign is that although you are working in great results there remain a hunger in you for more i am passionate about knowing the areas of ignorance in my life because there is so much i do not know are we together everything we desire in the kingdom is available the grace of god has made it available but it takes knowledge not just faith faith must be upon an, a person and an information that is correct you can have faith in error you can have faith in an information that is not correct so it's not just having faith the object of your faith must be authentic you need a high level of insight and light a high level of insight a high level of light are we together scattered in this auditorium and all around and all those following us from the nations of the world the reason listen carefully the reason why we have requests why we have desires is because there are expectations before us that are not yet our testimonies there are expectations before us there are things we desire some of you are here tonight trusting god for superior dimensions of the anointing some of you here are pastors you are struggling with membership up today down tomorrow and it's not that you are not anointed but not to the degree to get the results you desire there are people who are trusting god for certain levels of graces but you see the thing is not just to say i have knowledge is it to the degree that can give you the result I always liken knowledge I also liken the anointing to money if I want to take this this bottle of water and it is hundred naira if I have 70 naira I have money but not the value enough to purchase this this is what I am looking for so I must upgrade that value to the level that it can deliver this result are we together knowledge Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, the prophet of God was speaking by the Spirit. And he said, my people. He never said the hidden, my people. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Satan manipulated their understanding to make them see life from a perspective. And the result of that aberration is the pain and the discomfort that they have. Knowledge. The Bible says, through knowledge shall the just be delivered. There is a relationship between knowledge and deliverance, not just prayer. I told you that not all spirits go by prayer. The Bible never said so. This kind, there is a kind that goes by prayer. There is a kind that goes by prayer and fasting. There is a kind that goes by knowledge. The devourer does not go by fasting. The devourer does not go by knowledge. The devourer goes by obedience to a obedience to a correct information. Are we together? I believe in fasting. I believe in prayer. That's what we are doing now. But I'll be lying to you. Many believers keep mocking themselves, thinking just because you are praying and dissipating energy, it will cover for every spiritual predicament. No, sir. At best, God will take advantage of your alignment in prayer to lead you back to an information that is able to help you. In this kingdom, we reign on the strength of the light that we have. John chapter 1 and verse 5 says, The light shineth in darkness. The light shineth in darkness. The light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. For as long as it is night time in your life, weeping continues. The Bible says weeping endureth for the night. You don't stop crying just because you are tired of crying. You stop crying because light enough to turn your night to day. We are calling this place night now simply because something has happened to the sun in as much as we know. And we are not able to receive that illumination sufficient enough 
to turn the night to day. But a few hours now into the morning, everything is going to change. We rise in this kingdom by light, not desire. I desire prosperity is not enough to give you. I desire to walk in divine health. I desire for that hepatitis to go. I desire for that cancer to go. I desire for that HIV, that fibroid to leave my body. I desire for that barren womb to take in. It takes knowledge. It takes knowledge, not just desire. Hallelujah. You hear the testimonies of the people who God is granting them grace. Don't you think God just chose to bless them now? It is now the knowledge has come to them. And so it makes it look like this is the season God has wanted to bless you. He's always wanted to do it. But you only arise and shine when your light comes. Not when it's available. It has always been available. But the day it comes to you. Every lady's womb in this auditorium can take seed. But it doesn't make you pregnant automatically. The day a real seed enters that womb, then the process of conception starts. Are we together? But as you are now seated, that womb can produce. So it's not enough to just say, I have potentials. I know what can happen. No. If God wants to change your life, He grants you knowledge. Every religion that oppresses men in the world thrives through mysticism and ignorance. The strength of victimization and oppression is withholding classified information from people. The difference between the intelligence unit of the American nation and other nations of the world is their access to classified information. There is a kind of information that is not given to the third world nations to know. It is only supplied to them if they go and plead with the intelligence unit and then they give them terms. Is that true? As terrible as terrorism is on earth, right from space, there is a system of watching on earth, real time. But that information will not be given to you. It's the privilege of the holders of that information. That's why they are called world powers. They are not called world powers because they are bigger. They are called world powers because they have access to classify information. So we reign in this kingdom. Not just because of how macho we are. Not just because of how fluent we are. But the access to the information. The Bible says Jesus himself knew what to do. That's dominion. To know what to do. Good master, what must I do to be saved? In other words, I want to be saved, but it's not yet my experience. And I know that the bridge between me and that result is knowledge. Good master, what must I do? Not just that I desire to be saved. Good master, what must I do to be blessed financially? What must I do to be lifted? What must I do to rise to a realm where my body no longer hosts sickness? I shared with us a revelation, I don't know which of the days, that the Bible says when a spirit leaves a man, remember? A spirit does not leave a man on his own. It is casted. Is that true? Out of that person. In my name ye shall cast out devils. They don't want to go. But an anointing compels them to leave. And then the Bible says they go through desert regions. Listen carefully. And something about the desert does something to that spirit. And without any prayer warrior praying, the spirit leaves the desert and prefers to come back to the man. Hmm. The desert. That something can happen in a desert. No prayer meeting going on. No fasting going on. A spirit can be so uncomfortable in the desert. And it will rather return back to the man. That means there is something the body of man can become. That can make spirits. Even without any man praying. They will leave. And that mystery you see in the desert. Is what the Bible calls the mystery of fire. This fire you see. Is a mystery. There is something about the heat of the desert physically that does something to spirits and they prefer. That's why when Jesus casted them, they entered the swine straight into the water. Straight into the water.
and the people drove him and said, leave this place. When a spirit leaves a man, there is something about the habitation of a mortal man that is conducive for a spirit. And the moment it leaves it, it goes through desert regions. And something happens, not compatible to their design. And he says, I have to leave this area of hostility. So the Bible says, he maketh his angels winds and his ministers flames of fire. That when a man becomes a flame of fire, no spirit, no charm, no, no cause, by themselves, you will have a dream and watch certain things leave you. The first thing that happened to Samson, they bound his hand and the Bible says when the hand of the Lord came upon him suddenly, heat from nowhere, turned that thing. The Bible says it was like flax and all of a sudden he let it go. Are we together? We must be deeply passionate about spiritual knowledge. Not useless knowledge. There are all kinds of knowledge on earth. Occultism can give you knowledge about the spirit realm. That's why Jesus said, I am the door. The authorized system for routing this knowledge. You can read all kinds of books online. And that's why we have to be careful. Especially for we young people because in our appetite to chase knowledge, we have found ourselves dabbling into occultic. There are books that Moses wrote. But those books are occultic books. Your real Moses. He wrote those books before he encountered God. He wrote them as a very good student who was trained in Egypt. Today they use those books for occultism. He teaches you geometry, how to align yourself to certain angles on the earth that will make you be in touch with the constellations. Moses taught it. So, when we talk of knowledge, we are not just talking of a random pursuit of anything that is spiritual. In this day and age, where we measure respect for ministry, by how much what we supposedly call debt, we must be careful. The proof of knowledge is the deliverance that it brings. That's why many people keep growing supposedly in revelation. And with all that rema, the devil oppresses you as if that he's telling you, I'm not aware. Whatever it is you are celebrating, I'm not aware. True knowledge liberates. We pride ourselves with useless knowledge that is incapable of standing the test of time and bringing the victory that we desire stood over the city and wept and said you do not know the things that belong for your peace hallelujah let me show you something psalms 45 and verse 4 psalm 45 thank you jesus it says and in thy majesty right prosperously because of what truth not just meekness not just all of these things and thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things right prosperously not because of desire because of truth he says and ye shall know the truth and if it is really the truth you can know what you think is the truth you can know what a pastor tells you is the truth you can know what a denomination tells you is the truth. But if it is really the truth, the Bible says it makes men free. There are supposed truths in the body of Christ that don't make men free. Ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Acquiring things that puff us up. Knowledge that puffs up. Doesn't heal, doesn't deliver, doesn't bless, doesn't make people closer to God. There is power in knowledge. There is power in knowledge. There is power when knowledge is applied. We reign in this kingdom by the mysteries that we know. But the manifestation, the potency of those truths are brought to the scene when we act. The first thing to do is to get knowledge, not to act. The first thing to do is to build conviction, 
through the requisite knowledge that will bring you the result this bible you see is a compendium of all kinds of knowledge that scatter across different subject matters so the assignment of the believer is to walk as though you are walking through a garden and find the details that are responsible in this book is the knowledge that will take anybody from a failure to a success it's true in this book your assignment is to walk with the spirit of god are we together to be able to piece together all the required information not some not as much as you want all the required information in this world there is a system where men can walk in divine health it is true it is true now if your experience has not captured that reality it does not mean the word of god lied it is that you have not been able to construct in your spirit and your mind all the keys that are required to produce that outcome you can give me the ingredients to make fried rice and miss one important ingredient and what i will produce will not be called fried rice yes rice but not fried rice the difference between jollof rice and fried rice is combination rice is there in all of them are we together now yes there's a lot of ignorance in the body of christ there is a lot of cramming scripture there is a lot of quoting scripture there is a lot of devotionals there are a lot of translations of the bible there are so many books but there is very little knowledge that is required because if that knowledge translates to wisdom it will be justified by the children that it will produce hallelujah i don't want the kind of knowledge that puffs me up into pride you know knowledge can do something to you if you are not careful it can bring you to a sense of pride open to john chapter 4 verse you just ah he's going to verse 17 but the person who is talking there is not spiritual he's not god fearing he's under oppression he's sick as he's talking there and broke on top yet the person is telling you i know you are going to verse 17 that's ex the exact kind of knowledge satan needs so he he deceives you into being convinced that you are also a colleague in the realm of results whereas your life is not producing anything i know everything about getting people filled with the holy ghost i can go to acts chapter one yes i know isaiah 28 i know joel chapter two here is a gentleman in need of the baptism and you stand and struggle around there and create all kinds of flimsy excuses i know what the bible says concerning prosperity oh malachi chapter 3 bring ye all the tithes oh you know luke chapter 6 i know for my sake he became poor show me the results show me in your mind and show me in your life how god anointed jesus is it that one i know it i, I can even tell you the amplified version and we think that just because we gather those things we have knowledge no sir no sir we must be passionate about knowledge just because they made you a bible study leader in your church does not mean you are knowledgeable you are just the one who is representing the church and that's wonderful continue doing what you are doing but if it is results you are looking for you have to go back it's not a bible study manual that makes you knowledgeable demons don't have respect for those things i'm not against them but i'm saying much more than those things you have to go and sit down Martha was running up and down. He said, Martha, Martha, you were worried and, and, and um, offended about many things. He said, one thing is needful, to sit down at the master's feet. Lord, what is this secret to favor? What is it? Not, I know there is favor. Most of the results we want, we believe it exists. But how to make it our experience is where the challenge is. And that's one of the benefits of fasting. Ultimately, your faith rises. But the Bible says, the kind of fast I have commanded, your light will break forth. There is something about the supremacy that your spirit man will gain over your flesh. Because your flesh has been starved of food. 
and the strength of the flesh is the availability of food when the flesh is energetic it runs around and plays games but when there is the absence of food it has a way of forcing suppression to your flesh and then your spirit man can hear and understand then shall your light break forth shall your light break forth and your health speedily your health physical health hallelujah only if that our loved ones knew certain truths look at me look at all of us now in this place brothers and sisters look at the knowledge that god has granted us access to imagine what have you had certain revelations and immediately you almost start crying because you wish somebody you love so much think how many times you watch sincere people sincere christians become victims of the oppression of darkness through knowledge shall the just be delivered it takes knowledge to prosper it doesn't just take god to prosper it takes knowledge it takes knowledge to walk in the anointing there must be a desperate desire in your heart and my heart to pant after knowledge to pant after truth he said i'd rather be a doorkeeper in your house i know that that place is bethel the place of bread where there is knowledge i rather be than to go around celebrating please hear me those who are standing by the roadside and inside all the overflows right where you are standing the difference between you and any man you admire whether in business in ministry in 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 finances family life whatever it is is knowledge when a man fights with his wife and beats his wife it's not just the presence of demons the demons don't just act anyhow the demons take advantage of the ignorance are we together demons don't just act they don't just veto your will and act they take advantage of the gap in knowledge or the incompleteness of your knowledge and then they take advantage of it it is more dangerous to have incomplete knowledge it's better to have complete ignorance because the days of our ignorance god overlooks god can overlook certain things like you see a little child doing certain things and you are aware that that child does not have an ability to have that knowledge at that level and so you forbear if a small child comes and is rolling here now and playing around we may just guide the child in love but not to flog the child because at that level we expect that to happen but if as an adult you come and you are doing it we will first find out whether it's the holy ghost making you do it and if we find out it's not the one we will send you away and say no 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 you don't do this there is order in the house of god are we together? Mm. If you say you have been born again, that you are in Christ, you have access to the Spirit of God, then certain things should be seen in your life that validates the fact that you are walking with the Word, that validates the fact that you are not just reading your Bible in the morning just as a ritual to say, be a witness. You see me doing my devotion today. That's not knowledge, it can be religion. In fact, most times it is religion. Open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things. Open down my eyes. Open down my eyes. He said, call unto me and I will answer and I will show you, not tell you, show you great and mighty things that you do not know. Great and mighty things. Great and mighty dimensions of the anointing that you do not know. Great and mighty dimensions of influence that you do not know. Let me tell you this. Anybody in your life you see with sustainable results in any area, do not make a mistake of thinking it is luck. Are we together? No. There is no luck in this equation. When you see a mother train 11 children and for 30 years those children have remained in a way and manner 
that even shocks you don't just say Kai, madam you are lucky or what kind of anointing is on you no it's not just the anointing god can give you the same anointing on that woman and you won't be able to train one child with it that anointing functions well through knowledge knowledge gives the anointing efficiency knowledge gives the anointing efficiency the anointing does not just work anyhow knowledge gives the anointing efficiency otherwise there would not be need for the renewal of the mind knowledge gives the anointing efficiency you are still anointed 